Okay, here in this spreadsheet, we have a bunch of different projects. Let's assume that this company, they've allocated $75 million a year to spend on a whole bunch of different projects. And we've got a, a list of all the projects that they've brainstormed. So they got a project name, the department, how much that project is going to cost, what, how much money that project is going to return over the life of the project. So that's the net present value. So that's a discount sum of discounted future cash flows. So the bigger the NPV, the better. Okay, and then we've got here selected, meaning one. A one will mean they do the project, a zero means they don't do the project. So this is a standard for a binary value. So all right, let's set up our spreadsheet. Total selected project cost. So here, we're going to add up all of the project costs if selected is a one. So to do that, we'll use sum if the range, I'm gonna select E8, and I'm gonna hold shift and down. It's gonna be my range and my criteria will be a one, and the sum range will be the project costs in column C. Okay, so here the ones happen to add up to about 74 million. Now the surplus or overrun, that's just going to be equals the budget minus what we're going to spend on those projects. So here we have a surplus of about half a million dollars. So what's the total net present value of these projects? Like how much, what's, our, what's the bang for our buck here? So I'm going to do sum if again, sum if it's going to be similar. The range is going to be selected. The criteria will be one and the sum range will be column D now. That's where my net present value is. Okay, close that off. So that means I'm going to spend uh, $74 million. Uh, the net present value is 36 million. So that means I'm going to be getting back um, like more than 74 million. That's like 110 million. Think about it that way. So this is how much profit after we're spending all that money. So that's good, 36 million. But can I do better? So if we were going to do this by hand, I could say, okay, well, maybe this project's really expensive. So I'm going to make that one a zero. Uh, I'll, I'm going to put some ones by these projects, uh, but I, I can see my surplus. I've spent too much money, so I've got to put a zero there. So how would I figure out what's the best use of my resources? I could do, go through this whole list of, you know, 100 projects manually, trying to figure out which one's going to give me the, the highest return, the highest net present value while still staying in budget. But that is going to take a long time. Instead, here's a cool thing that you can do using Solver. And so this is an idea I came up with myself. You won't find this, as far as I know, anywhere else. We can use Solver to figure out the best answer for us. So in this situation, gosh, we've overspent. Uh, so what's my baseline? Let's just say 33. So my back of the napkin calculations, $33 million. Like can we, can Solver beat that for us while staying in budget? So make sure we have Solver installed. So we're gonna to go to file, options, add-ins, manage Excel add-ins, click go. Make sure the Solver box is checked. It is for me because I've already got it installed. So I'm not gonna change anything there. Now I can go to data, Solver. And I can set my objective. So my objective here, it's got to be a single cell. I want the net present value because that's, that's my return on investment. I want the biggest return from my investment. So what cells am I going to change? All I'm going to change are by change. Oops. I'm going to go back to my objective, make that B5. 
by changing cells, make sure my cursor is blinking in there. And I'm going to choose that selected column. All these potential projects are going to be my changing cells. Now, I'm going to have to have some constraints. Because they can only be 0 or 1. So I'm going to select all of these. You know, I'm going to copy that reference because we're going to have a bunch of control C to copy that. Um, less than or equal to 1. Cell reference, it's got to be uh, greater than or equal to 0. And it's got to be an integer. I can't do half a project in this case. We could make this more sophisticated and have projects span multiple years, but we won't be doing that right now. So that's good. Now I also need my surplus to be greater than or equal to 0. Uh, so that's good. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to make my unconstrained variables non-negative. That's good. Okay, I'm going to mute my notifications real quick. And so let's take a look. Uh, are all of our constraints, I think all of our constraints are good. B4 must be greater than or equal to 0. I did greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to say I can spend exactly how much I budgeted. The selected columns must be integers. Yep, less than or equal to negative 1, non-negative. This is good. So I'm going to choose evolutionary and click solve. So what Excel is going to do is make these zeros or ones, and it's going to be constantly, because of these formulas, we'll be injecting those zeros and ones into these formulas up here for a net present value. And um, the project costs and surplus overrun, all that. It's going to optimize this for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click solve. And it's going to take some time. So if I look down here, Excel's already found a solution that would give me $52 million in profit, jumped up to 54. So what it's doing, really, it's turning off for me the less less effective projects. It's making those zeros and it's turning on making selecting projects that are giving me a bigger bang for my buck. So this is kind of like automatic budgeting for me. I just pick my target and Excel is doing the heavy lifting of doing all the calculations. So now this is a search function. Excel is searching tons of different combinations. We have probably millions of different combinations. If we did every single possible combination of projects, it would be very difficult to go through every single combination exhaustively. That would take a very long time. These kind of problems can uh, balloon in size. So S Solver found a solution for me. So I'm going to click OK. So some of these projects that were a 1 before are now zeros. Excel turned them off. So we can, we can kind of guess why that happened. So here I'm spending $2 million, getting $2 million back. That's kind of like, it's not a great return, I guess you could say. Um, some of the projects might just be too expensive. We can do three smaller projects that give a better return. If we look at this project, Morph Next Generation E-Services, big cost, not much return. So it makes sense that Excel turned that one off. Same thing with Scale Next Generation Partnerships. From really bad return there. Um, so we can see that a lot of these decisions that Excel made made a lot of sense. Now, I could theoretically run this algorithm 10 times and get 10 slightly different results uh, because this is... State, uh, this is non-deterministic, uh, meaning that randomness is being injected into the process over and over. So that's one thing to be aware of using these evolutionary algorithms. You, if you run this and you do everything that I did, you could come up with a different number here. 
It could be slightly higher, could be slightly lower, should be around the same ballpark. Um, but that's just what you get with these type of algorithms. But by doing that, uh, instead of eyeballing with our first solution, our company is going to make $20 million more by selecting a more efficient mix of projects.